You must be the legendary traveler! I've heard a lot about you. Oh, are you following the tournament too? It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird from Fontaine. I've been posted here to cover the King of Invocations Grand Prix. Since you've also taken interest in the tournament, how would you like to be a special contributor for my column? <laughs> of course, you'll receive payment as a contributor, and your name will even appear in the credits. If I'm not mistaken, you're even acquainted with some of the contestants, right? Oh ho ho, I really do have an eye for a story, don't I? It seems like this will be a solid piece. <gasps> I can see it now. Exclusive inside scoop on the renowned traveler and secrets of the TCG Tournament Masters. How does that sound? Yeah, it has a nice ring to it, no? Eh, it's just a working title for now. Any journalist worth their salt knows how to look past the surface and get the real story on any breaking news. But it's important to always keep the stories based on actual facts. We can always discuss more details later. Of course, I'll be covering the latest stories from the King of Invocations Grand Prix. But I'll definitely be keeping my eyes open for any other potential news leads. When it comes to breaking news, I'm always the first on the scene. Ah, anyway, I won't keep chatting your ear off. There's a lot more exciting news waiting to be uncovered. So let's have a look. Hmm? Do my ears deceive me? Or do you two have some breaking news to share with me? Wow. A card snatcher? Hmm, how very interesting. City on the Lake teams with talent in TCG tournament as young prodigy Vess Favonian Cavalry Captain. Down on the ground, the dice spin around, while high in the sky, the sun shines bright. All right, <laughs> say your piece, Challenger. I, Kaidahara Kazuha, humbly accept this duel. Inazuma's Archon bolts her way to the semifinals, only to be stunned by a crafty opponent. <laughs> the nerve. Saying that in the presence of me and A? Lightning from Inazuma won't be able to reach me in Fontaine, right? You must be tired after the walk back to shore. Perhaps I should let you go first. If this red tofu with all the frills hasn't gotten too cold, I would be happy to play. Tournament? The tournament has already finished. I used Forbidden Hand at the opportune moment. Rest assured, there's no destination I can't deliver to. Thank you for choosing Comania Express. Mushrooms here! They're big enough to lie on! Hello everyone! Welcome to the Genshin Impact version 3.7 special program. I'm your host, Sarah Miller Cruz, the voice of Lumine, and I have a new friend here with me. Make sure the truth comes first and report stories that stand out the most. This is reporter Charlotte from the Steambird. A pleasure to meet you! Hey everybody! 
I'm Maya Aokitaro, the voice of Charlotte. And as mentioned just now, Charlotte is a reporter from Fontaine, and she's currently working for the Steambird, which many of you may have probably already heard of. Oh, for sure. It's been mentioned in several places throughout the game now. And if I remember correctly, Mona also writes a column for the Steambird. So it seems like it's pretty famous and people all across Nevada are reading it. Yes, that's right. But I'm not the only special correspondent in our special program today. Ooh. We also have other special correspondents reporting from the field that will help us bring all the information we need about this upcoming version. So exciting! Okay, I bet everyone's ready to see what we have in store. So why don't we dive right in? <laughs> okay, seems there's quite a lot going on in the picture here. I see a couple familiar faces. And let me guess, the cute one in the middle with pink hair and a camera in her hands must be Charlotte, right? Ooh, that's right. <laughs> Charlotte's the one with the camera. She is a journalist after all, so she's got her equipment ready at all times. So in the upcoming version, Charlotte will be appearing in the event storyline, where she'll be dispatched to cover a popular Genius Invocation TCG competition. Given that the competition is an international event, Charlotte will be heading to several nations to gather her news materials. Okay, that explains why we see so many friends from different nations in the picture here. Does that mean that she's going to be traveling around to that then? <laughs> you bet. As a foreign correspondent, she'll definitely be checking out the event venues in different locations. So get ready to embark on a Genius Invocation TCG journey. Whoop, whoop. However, a keen and active reporter like Charlotte won't only focus on the Genius Invocation TCG event, even though that's really important. But during this journey, she will also be investigating a very strange case alongside the traveler. Ooh, a strange case, huh? Okay, that does actually sound really newsworthy. Yeah, right? But uh, that's all I can share for now. The mystery will be yours to unveil in version 3.7. So if you want to find out what happens, then make sure you don't miss out. Yay! We hope our travelers have a great time in this event. In addition to the event storyline we just introduced, the Adventurers Guild has also prepared some other event mini games to spice up the TCG tournament. That's right. There will be a total of four event game modes, including a tour of wonders, zero hour invocation, ever motion mechanical painting, and heart of the dice. In a tour of wonders, the organizer has set up checkpoints in various nations. After you complete the required challenges by navigating obstacles or defeating monsters, you'll be able to obtain commemorative stamps at the checkpoints. So collect more of these stamps during your sightseeing tour to obtain the corresponding rewards. Okay, I see. So the stamps will be like proof of your experience traveling in different nations during the event. You know, just like collecting stamps in a passport. Exactly. Next, we have Zero Hour Invocation, which is an unofficial tournament organized for our passionate TCG players. Unlike the official tournament matches, this format adopts a special rule set, so you won't be able to use your own decks. Oh. Instead, you will have to build a deck by selecting cards out of the decks prepared by the organizers. And chances are, you'll get to duel against some familiar faces. Okay, <laughs> sounds like fun already. All right, what about Evermotion Mechanical Painting and Heart of the Dice? I think many of our travelers have played Evermotion Mechanical Painting before, but this game introduced by a dreamer from Fontaine has undergone a few new changes. So this time around, you need to adjust the position of the mechanical painting surfaces by swapping or rotating them first, and then install the appropriate gears on the preset points to restore the painting. And I've heard that the paintings are all based on Genius Invocation TCG cards. <laughs> How awesome is that? That's gonna be so cool. And based on the people we've met, you should never underestimate Fontaine's pursuit of mechanical designs. But of course, I'm sure our keen travelers should be able to restore those paintings with just a few attempts, or more than just a few attempts if, <laughs> if people need it. <laughs> Lastly, we have Heart of the Dice, which is a combat game mode. During combat, you'll be able to obtain random elemental dice by defeating monsters. Use the suppressive roll skill to consume all the dice you possess and unleash a shockwave that deals damage to nearby opponents, while also granting you random buffs. More dice consumed matching the elemental type of the active character will result in greater damage dealt by the shockwave and higher chances of obtaining more buffs. Okay, it seems like these are some special dice, so we'd better make good use of them. <laughs> yep, and travelers will be happy to know that there are a variety of rewards waiting in these events. In addition to Primo gems and enhancement materials, rewards also include a new four-star bow called Ibis Piercer, along with its exclusive refinement materials. Yay! 
so exciting! <laughs> all right, that's all we have regarding the main event in the upcoming version. On to our next correspondent. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. That may be all for the version event, but I still have something else to report. Oh, okay. In version 3.7, there'll not only be a genius invocation event, but also a major update to the TCG game itself. What? Oh, okay, that's awesome. What can we expect to see in the new update then? So in the upcoming version, many new cards will be added to Genius Invocation TCG, including character cards, monster cards, and action cards. Amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's also noteworthy that the cards of the Animo, Geo, Electro, and Dendro Archons will also be available after the update. Ooh. So we can expect to see some incredible and fun new decks. Nice. Okay, that's gonna be quite the update. And there's more. So with so many cards being added, how could we fully enjoy them without some new game modes? So in version 3.7, the Arena of Champions mode will be available too. And, and what'll be different about this mode? Glad you asked. In this mode, travelers must use their deck to duel against each other and accumulate a total of five victories. Ooh. As you can imagine, that can be a serious test even for a seasoned duelist. Plus, three defeats will result in a failed challenge attempt, and you'll have to start all over. So if oh you're no. feeling yeah, if you're feeling confident about your deck and your TCG skills, then be sure to come to the cat's tail and give it a shot. Okay, that sounds pretty intense. Will there be anything for someone less experienced, you know, maybe like myself? <laughs> <laughs> no worries, I got you. Okay, so another TCG mode is called the Forge Realms Temper, which will also be available you'll be allowed to configure the difficulty of the game mode, as well as to choose from a bunch of additional conditions to score extra points. Okay, perfect. I'll definitely be picking some conditions that suit my decks the best. <laughs> what, what's what happening? <laughs> what is going that on? sounds cute. Where is it coming from? <laughs> I got so caught up in listening to you two talking that I almost forgot that I'm on the job. Anyway, here I am. Aww. Aww. I have an urgent delivery for you. Please sign here, and I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a good review. Thank you. Oh my gosh, so cute. Welcome back, travelers! Our two special correspondents this time are... Dun, da, da, da. It's me! It's Jenny Okabori, the Yay! voice of Yoimiya! <laughs> Hi, everybody! <laughs> I'm so excited to be here doing the special program. This is one of the most exciting moments of my life. Yay! Woo! Meowdy, travelers! I'm Julia Gu, voice actress for the new playable character, Kirara. Okay, so you were in a kitty box just now, so thank you for that urgent delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yup, that's just Kirara's job. She is a courier like no other. More like purrier. Ooh! Oh, no. Meowster for done. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to hear more about Kirara, why don't we check her out first? Yay! Let's do it! Whoa, the scenery here is wonderful. <laughs> I've landed the perfect job. Coming through! Whee! Service with a smile! Oh my gosh, I want her to be my best friend. She's so oh cute. Is her tails. Oh, so cute. <laughs> her tails. Her I tails know. made a heart. That's the most <laughs> adorable thing I've ever seen. 
I so know. Cute. Did you guys see her in the little box? It was like, oh, she coming. Oh, she coming. <laughs> also, her ult is like really cool. I want to so eat cute. the jellies. I want to like eat those slimes. <laughs> Kiara works as a courier for Komania Express and often makes international deliveries. She's also a yokai from Inazuma called a Nekomata, and there's nothing she can't deliver. Oh, okay, that explains, like, the cute little kitty cat tails and why her shoes are, like, those cute little cat claws. They have, like, the toe beans at the bottom, and I want a pair. So, uh, actually, uh, those are just her regular feet. Oh, then I'm embarrassed. For Kirara, yeah. uh, even though she could use her yokai powers to have human feet, she's still a Nekomata and feels more comfortable using her own claws to move. That and makes her sense, beans. they're so cute. They really are! And also, Kirara has two tails. Can you tell us anything about that? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's it said that the tail represents a Nekomata's potential. So, with two tails, I guess this means that Kirara is a really powerful yokai. Some bandits might assume that Kirara is an easy target, thinking that it would be easy to steal a package from a young girl, fools. but <laughs> but they are in fact fools. And this mistake yes. always ends with the bandits running off after she gives them a good <laughs> thrashing. I'm obsessed uh, with this. So She's awesome. Just little <laughs> kitty cat girl boss. <laughs> like, okay, and having her as your courier basically like determines that your package is going to get there safe. That is incredible service. Oh yeah, no doubt about that. Kirara is a very responsible worker and will do her best to ensure every order she receives is delivered. Of course, if the client can spare a meowment, she doesn't mind receiving a good review. <laughs> oh my gosh, she is so cute and diligent. I would definitely give her an extra tip right on the spot. Absolutely. Like, catnip, fish, mora, whatever she wants. <laughs> okay, so... How did a yokai from Inazuma end up working as a delivery person? What is what's the what's the line there? Okay, well, if you think about it, the yokai in Inazuma do seem to have a mix of jobs. So, True. Yeah. well, speaking of which, even though Kiara is a strong yokai, she does care about her work and enjoys her job. She also enjoys human society, fashion, going to places she's never had the chance to visit before. Her deliveries give her a way into human society and also allows her to explore new places. To her, working is basically like getting to take a series of, uh, <clears throat> expense-free trips. <laughs> Wait, you know what I just realized? Charlotte is technically traveling for work, too. So maybe they can get together and enjoy some expense-free outings. Cool. Okay, I think everyone is waiting to learn more about this yokai courier's abilities. Absolutely, yes, correct. Mm. For sure. Let's move into Kirara's ah. skills. Oh. <laughs> Kirara is a Dendro Element Sword user and can effectively assist her companions while also making world exploration more efficient. Okay, her attacks look amazing. She swipes just like a cat using its claws. I love um, it. <laughs> yeah, she is a Nekomata after all. Additionally, her exploration talent allows her to move near birds or other smaller animals without startling them. She's an apex predator. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> That's so cool. So it's going to be easier to get like fowl and raw meat and easier to hunt. Yeah, watch out, Timmy. Timmy should watch his back. Oh, <laughs> not Timmy. No. Yes, Timmy. No. Sorry. Sass me. <laughs> well, she's always going to keep you well fed, no matter the means. Uh, by tapping her elemental skill, Kirara creates a dendro shield that can protect her from harm. Okay, shields are great! They'll keep both her and the delivery safe, which is Love all that shield. matters! Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and holding down the elemental skill will not only grant shields, but also put Kirara in a unique state. Cool, so the whole thing is that that's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, and I need you to immediately tell me more about it right meow. <laughs> oh, no problem at all. Thank you, yes. In this state, Kirara will deal dendro damage upon slamming into enemies, but more uniquely, this state will also drastically increase her movement and climbing speed, along with her jumping ability. Okay, um, that sounds super useful. So just so I can get this straight, she'll be able to just climb straight up walls? Oh yeah, she'll be able to go straight up a vertical surface in this state. Um, okay, well, that's- Amazing. The best thing ever. <laughs> She's gonna be so great for exploring. And I guess that's one of the reasons why she's a trustworthy courier. Mm-hmm. And finally, with her elemental burst, she smashes the enemy with a special delivery package, which then explodes into numerous small dendro bombs. These bombs will then explode upon contacting enemies or after a duration, dealing dendro damage. And can we just appreciate the fact that the bombs are kitty-shaped? Because I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> and yeah. so cute. 
so cute. She has kitty styled attacks, kitty styled deliveries, and she also has kitty styled bombs. Amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is adorable. So aside from Kirara running to various nations making deliveries, I also heard about another one of our friends leaving their home to explore the world. Ooh, so who wants to go on a trip? Oh my gosh, wait, is it you and Mia? Because you guys are like looking <laughs> oh? at me, a humble oh? PNG. Amazing, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I think you might be knowledgeable about traveling across nations because you have information on Yoimiya's story quest. I totally do. I was just being a little stinker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Sakoku Decree has been repealed for some time now, and Yoimiya has been wanting to go out and see the outside world. In version 3.7, the second act to Yoimiya's Karasius Arata story quest is about to begin! Woohoo! She will be embarking on a globe-trotting adventure, heading to Sumeru, the Nation of Wisdom, alongside the Traveler. Whoop whoop! It's a pretty far trip. I mean, personally, I'm really looking forward to it too. Not that I'm biased or anything. I seriously cannot wait to experience what happens in the 3.7 update. Right? And, uh, uh huh. And you know, traveling with a girl is easygoing and cheerful and cool and amazing. Not that I'm biased or anything, as you and Mia will be a joy. I think she's probably like the best like travel companion. Again, not biased or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But to ensure that everyone gets the most out of this story quest, I'm gonna be a good bean and I will not say any spoilers. That way our travelers get the chance to explore the story. I'll be good. <laughs> okay. But that, when... that, that's nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, see, I'm good. <laughs> but when the time comes, I hope you Amia's new story can brighten everyone's day just like she always does. Oh yeah. Of course. Ding. For sure. And we're not biased. No, not no. biased. No, none of us. Just honest. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> also, kind of like speaking of honesty, I was honestly wondering what new companions can travelers invite for their teams in version 3.7? Right. That takes us to our event wishes. I think this is something our travelers are always interested in. So for further details about 3.7's event wishes, please direct your attention to the big screen. Ta-da! Oh, wh where did that come from? Oh, I just remembered that we're today's reporters. <clears throat> what? Oh. According to reliable sources, the first half of 3.7's event wishes will boost drop rates for Yoimiya and Yaimiko. At the same time, Kirara will also be making her debut in these event wishes, so travelers who want Kirara might want to take note. And the second half of version 3.7's event wishes will see Kaidahara Kazuha and Alhatham getting their own reruns. Sarah, why are you talking like that? Because we're reporters! Thanks, Sarah. With the help of their companions, we hope that all our travelers will be able to keep happily exploring Tavad. And now to Jenny with the weather. The weather is still weather. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> when travelers follow Yoimiya to Sumeru, they might also encounter their old friend Kave. This is because Kave's very own hangout event will also be available in version 3.7. <gasps> our master architect from Sumeru. Yeah, and Kave is quite the character. Even though he seems super carefree, he has certain principles that he always clings to. I'm sure as we spend time with him during the hangout, we'll get to know him a lot better. Oh, we're gonna be besties in no time. <laughs> so travelers interested in learning more about Kave will get to experience his stories firsthand in version 3.7. Definitely something to look forward to. Yay! Ooh. Yeah! Woo! Now that we've covered the new stories coming our way, I think we can move on to some news about other fun events coming in version 3.7. What do you think? I think that's a very good idea, Yay! Sarah, my friend. <laughs> okay, so not only are there events, but there will also be tons of incredible rewards and prizes, too! Ooh! Ooh I'm yeah. so excited! Oh, be. so am I. So, without further ado, let me introduce the first event. In version 3.7, the Divine Ingenuity Collector's Chapter event will be available. Oh, I remember this event. This is the one that lets you design your own domain. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Right. However, this event's gameplay has been upgraded a bit, and the development team has specifically designed some stages for everyone to challenge and get used to the rules. For example, the first stage requires you to build a mechanic to defend a monolith, and the second will be a coin collecting fiesta that everyone's familiar with. Mm. Okay, yes, yeah, so fun story. I'm not the best at collecting coins, so <laughs> I already know that I'm going to be a little bit all over the place in this one, so... That's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. 
As for the third stage, there will be multiple areas available, and everyone will be able to get a special item. Artificer coins. Oh, I want it. You're gonna get a lot of them. Thank you. These coins will allow people to buy various buffs from buff stations located in each area to boost their team's effectiveness. Nice! Okay, so we'll be able to keep getting stronger as we progress. Exactly. The fourth stage requires everyone to keep their characters alive while they go around collecting coins. The last stage features a buff bestower device capable of amplifying your opponent's capabilities, so you're gonna want to destroy that first before engaging them in battle. Oh, oh there's so much to do! Okay, so just to confirm, we can use all of this while we're making our own domains, yes? Yes. <sighs> Aside from different landforms, mechanisms, or coins, travelers can also adjust how many stages are active per room and opponent settings. Even buffs and buff bestowers can be placed inside these stages. Wait, you, that's so cool. Okay, so it sounds like the travelers will have even more creative freedom this time around. So what I'm gathering is that everyone should use their imagination and sprinkle as much creativity as they can into their designs, you yeah. know? A little bit here, a little bit there, a whole lot of traps. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they'll also sprinkle some ingenuity as well. Get but, um, it? That's, Get it? <laughs> that's literally what I just said. Ingenuity, traps, tomato, tomato, yeah. <laughs> well, uh... Traps. Sure, as long as it's creative. Chaos. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> this time, there will also be co-op mechanics for this game mode. So if there's a stage you can't beat on your own, you can bring your friends and try the challenges. Or, uh, fall into Jenny's traps together. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, domain creators also must clear their own designs before they'll be able to share them with others. Okay, seriously, how do people clear some of these stages? They seem like they're gonna be really difficult. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you other than the fact that people are kind of amazing. Yeah, that's I don't know fair. if you guys have seen, <laughs> but there are videos out there of people showcasing their own stages, and it's crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, I hope all our creative travelers out there won't miss this event. Remember to share your codes or videos and let everyone play your domains. Traps. Oh dear. Okay, so next, we have a challenge event called the Feast of the Departed Warriors. A mysterious domain has appeared near the Falcon Coast, and its depths are crawling with powerful foes. Travelers will need to rely on their martial prowess to defeat them and earn rewards. Ooh, Departed Warriors. Sounds spooky. <laughs> I thought so too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this event should be one that many travelers are familiar with. However, let me give a quick overview for anyone who might not have seen this one yet. Thank you, Sarah. This event has three types of dangerous adversaries awaiting our travelers. They're each based on the Thunder Manifestation, Eon Blight Drake, and the Bethysmal Bishop Herd, respectively. Travelers can also add additional conditions to their difficulty multiplier in this challenge, with increased difficulty resulting in greater rewards. Okay, I, I think I get the gist of this one. I heard Thunder Manifestation and my heart stopped a little bit, so full disclosure, I'm probably not going to be doing the increased difficulty, but I hope everyone's ready for a challenge! <laughs> <laughs> yes, this one looks like it could be tough. Don't worry, travelers can still get key rewards and materials by completing the challenge on lower difficulties, including Primo Gems. Oh, thank goodness. Travelers who are looking for a real challenge can try the higher difficulties for a proper fight. I heard lower difficulties, and I once again feel safe. Cool beans. <laughs> Let's move on to the next event. Okay, so this one is another returning event for version 3.7 called Phase Trials Hypothesis. So maybe some of you remember Jammy, the Sumeru researcher who was struggling with his thesis proposal. Well, this time, he needs your help as observers in an experiment. We're pretty sure all our warm-hearted and friendly travelers will give him a hand. Also, as a little, you know, incentive, um, each experiment also offers rewards upon completion. Of course we're gonna help him. Besides, we're getting rewarded for offering our help, so what's there to lose? Exactly. Right? So, I mean, given our travelers are honorary knights of the Knights of Favonius, and heroes who have assisted the Liyue Qixing, as well as, uh, actually everyone, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Pretty much everybody at this point, I think, yeah. Yeah. Well, helping this one researcher should be just another walk in the park. Okay, so during the event, travelers can defeat enemies to gain phase tinctures. When they get enough phase tinctures, they can use them to enter the time dilation state. In this state, they can identify the weaknesses of their opponents mid-battle and select opportune moments to capture more weaknesses 
in their opposition before using their super sense skill to deal massive damage. Ooh, having the ability to detect weaknesses is very helpful when facing challenges. Not to mention, the damage dealt by this super sense skill is pretty incredible. Oh, oh it's really yeah. cool. <laughs> I mean, that sounds really useful. It can take care of opponents in a snap. You know, like taking a picture. Oh, wow. I didn't know that you were going to be channeling your inner Sino. I didn't know. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, but remember, this event requires you to use the corresponding trial characters for the challenge. Oh, good. Okay, this way everyone will be able to try out more characters. Exactly. Okay, there's seriously so much for all of us to experience in version 3.7. And, <laughs> oh, would you look at the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, the third redemption code is coming right up. Let's have a look together. Here it comes. Yay! Get ready. <laughs> whoop, whoop. And that's the end of today's report. It seems like all our reporters have returned to the studio now, which means we've reached the conclusion of our program. This has been so much fun. I can't believe it's over already. It happened so fast. I know. <laughs> I wish we had even more to share. So how did you all enjoy being on the program today? Oh my gosh. It has been so, so cool being on the program. And Oh, I can't wait for people to hear Kirara. Oh, she's so cute. I just she is ah. so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this is so much fun. I've been wanting to do one of these programs for the longest time, and I'm so excited that I get to be here and talk about you and Mia. And also, I'm super excited for Julia and Maya to be joining the cast to welcome Yay! you guys. Oh, it's been a long time. <laughs> Oh this my been gosh. Amazing. This has been so much fun today, and um, I am just also really excited for these mini games, mini events. Yeah. I'm so excited, yeah. especially the Evermotion Mechanical Painting. Mini games, big excitement. <laughs> Yes, because I just, I just love the puzzles. I just love them. <laughs> Don't forget, there's a strange case to investigate at the tournament ground, so Ooh. players should be sure to check that out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I was happy to join the program with you all and share all these details about version 3.7 with everyone. So hope you all have a fantastic time in the upcoming update. All right, this is the end of our program. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.
We're way behind schedule. To survive hardship, you must prepare for hardship.
Mouse trap. Lucky today? I'll be back. You want this one? You want this one? I'll take my feet. How are you? Exit! How That's close enough. You are not welcome here. I'll be back. I'll be back. Next on the agenda... Way behind schedule.
next on the agenda? Astra, thank you for comp. This realm is... If you ever have...
Where's my key? Uh, oh, not again. We're way behind schedule. Frost. <laughs> Access denied. We're way behind schedule. Next 
next on the agenda? Way behind schedule. This is long overdue. No touching. on the agenda? Allow me! 